2017 Perry LeCompton High School live web stream is brought to you by Ham Companies, a strong employer of Jefferson County for over 70 years, providing high quality service in waste management, asphalt, road construction, and quarries. And McCray Lumber, with two convenient locations in Topeka and Lawrence, be sure to call R.J. Brown at the Lawrence location or Travis Daniels at the Topeka location for all of your home improvement needs. And First Aid Bank and Trust, your local full service bank with hometown pride. Let their friendly staff help you with loans, savings, and checking. Whether you're a longtime customer or looking to open a new account, First State Bank and Trust is there for you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Perry LeCompton High School here in Perry, Kansas. It is homecoming night, as the screen says. Perry LeCompton Cause will be taking on the Atchison County Community High School Tigers this evening. Coach Landis is with me here again tonight. Coach Landis, what do you think? You excited, ready for homecoming? Hey, we're always ready for homecoming, and this is a beautiful night. Maybe a little breezy tonight, but uh, I think we're going to escape with no, no rain and uh, just a great night to have football game. Yes, it is. I will tell you one thing. As we're setting up here in this press box, the uh, clouds are to the west, so uh, this evening we have no sun in our eyes to start the night, so that's always nice to have. Uh, we did mention homecoming, so what we'd like to take a look at real quick, we did get some homecoming footage uh, from today, so let me uh, clear a few things off here, and we'll try to take a look real quick at some of the homecoming activities. Provided by the drone of Caleb Denton today, so Coach Denton providing a little technical assistance, so we appreciate that with him. Okay, so we're going to move along here. We're going to look at the offensive starter for tonight's contest. So quickly here, let's see if we can get something on the background and, and get a little offensive starters pulled up. Looking on the offensive side of the ball for the cause, left tackle, number 70, Kyle Bonham, the senior. Again, Kyle having a great year blocking up front. Left guard, Scott Urban, the junior. Center, Sam Kinsey, also a junior. Right guard, Mason Rohde, the senior. Right tackle, Spencer Funk, junior. Uh, one of the slot backs, Ty Packard. Number 16, number 38, Shane Quinlan. Slot ends, Colton Maloney, number 3. Number 83, Landon Johnson on the other side. The running back, the backfield, the, sen the uh, senior, Tyler Erickson. And also the quarterback, number 20, Dalton Kellum. Looking on the defensive side of the ball here. 
Number 50, Ike Dwyer. Number 80, Cole Logan. This is going to be Cole's first start in week three. The tackle up front, number 73, Mason Rohde. And again, the senior, number 70, Kyle Bonham, the other tackle. The inside backers, number 55, Scott Urban, the junior. The sophomore, number 7, Grant, Grant Roush stepping in. Cornerbacks at the uh, one corner is Dalton Kellum. Number two, Drew Ledbetter will be at the other cornerback on the opposite side of the field. Free safety, 38, the junior Shane Quinlan. Strong safety, number 19, Joel Guess. And at weak safety, 16, the senior Ty Packard. So there are your offensive and defensive lineups for this evening's game. And now let's take a quick look at Atchison County uh, for the Tigers. Coach Landis, as we looked at this, you and I worked the game last year. One thing that stood out to us was, uh, uh, one, the numbers. They didn't have a lot of uh, kids out for football last year. And then secondly, of course, uh, they had a, a tough go at it. I think they went 0-9 last year, looking at uh, the record from 2016. Again, as you go through that setup of 0-9 as a coach, how do you continue to get your, uh, your kids motivated there? Well, you know, every year is uh, different. Every group of kids are different. And kids who, you know, schools do get into down cycles. Uh, right now, they may appear to be in a down cycle. 0-2, oh, boy, that's tough. But there are kids who come back and fight, and they, they work hard. And I, we would expect that the Atchison Tigers are some of those kids. They have had, they have had exceptional programs in the past. So... Uh, if I'm coach out there right now, I'm talking to my young kids and saying, guys, yeah. you got to get out there. you got to work harder and expect good things to happen. If you work hard, you will be rewarded. Now, a little bit of information we do have on Atchison County, too. Again, they, they've been in the Big 7 League. Uh, then they switched to what I believe what used to be the Delaware Valley League. Yeah, coach, did. And, and now came back to the Big 7, and we re have received word this week that they are going to be going back to the Northeast Kansas League, which is similar to the old Delaware Valley. So I think size-wise, it's going to be a little bit better fit for them in terms of competition. So good luck again to Atchison County uh, Tigers as they go forward after this year in a new league. Uh, looking at the cause, again, we mentioned the cause 2-0 and on the season, 2-0 and in Big 7 League play. Uh, week 1, the 56-14 uh, win over Riverside. Week 2 last week right here at Perry LeCompton High School, a 63-8 win over the Hiawatha Red Hawks. So, again, uh, two teams on two different cycles right now, 1-0 and 2, 1-2 and 0. Uh, we're going to see how things go tonight. And any time, again, you're, you're stepping on a football field on a Friday night for homecoming, you never know what's going to happen. So we are ready for a good one here. So, again, be sure and join us uh, for the full game tonight on your call webcast. Welcome to the weekly Big 7 League update. Uh, this week is the week three edition of our update, and we've seen some movement in league standings. So uh, let's get started here by taking a look uh, at what happened in last week's scores. Uh, so Big 7 scores from week two, Sabetha. 21-0 uh, over Holton. And we have Riverside uh, going down to Jeff West, 12-36. Uh, so Jeff West stayed unbeaten in Big 7 League play. Uh, Troy, 42-24 over Atchison County. Emaha Central uh, winners big against Royal Valley, 55-14. And, of course, the game that uh, you saw here last week on our Perry LeCompton High School broadcast, the cause 63 eight over the Hiawatha Red Hawks. And as far as how those scores change the Big Seven standings, again, Jeff West, Nemaha Central, Perry LeCompte, and Sabeth all remain at the top of the league standings with that 2-0 record. Uh, Royal Valley and Holton took a slide down uh, from the top of the mountain, so to speak, and falling to a 1-1 record in league play. And Atchison County, Hiawatha, Riverside are again setting at 0-2 in the Big Seven league. So this week, again, we have matchups that uh, could shake things up again, so let's take a look at those big seven games here week three. Atchison County, of course, here at homecoming at Perry LeCompton High School. Uh, Holton will travel up to Nemaha Central, and again, Holton again having that big tradition taking on a very good Nemaha Central team, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how that is progressing throughout the night here. And Jeff West taking on Sabetha, again, two 2-0 two teams right now in the league, so somebody's going to have some movement there. Uh, after tonight. Royal Valley is going to Riverside and then Hiawatha will be at home taking on Donovan West. So that's your Big 7 League scores, or Big 7 League standings and scores for this week. Um, 
Again, so let's also now take a look at Class 3A rankings, which we've done last week. And again, compared to last week, no change here. And the uh, Class 3A rankings, as you can see, is still Silver Lake, number one, Nemaha Central, Phillipsburg, Conway Springs, and Marysville, all setting undefeated atop the Class 3A rankings. We will point out that if you can see that, others considered at the bottom, which kind of turns this into your top 10, if you will, that everything after number five is unranked, it's just mentioned teams. Uh, you will find that both Sabetha and Perry LeCompton are in the mention this week. Uh, again, they're setting with the 2-0 record, so it's going to be uh, kind of interesting to see how things shake up there. So Big 7, very well represented in Class 3A in the state of Kansas. So that's our uh, weekly Big 7 update. So I hope you enjoyed that. And again, make sure you tune in next week, and we'll give you an update on how things this Friday night. Thinking about a new deck? McCray Lumber is your deck headquarters with the most advanced products in the industry. See a wide variety of built examples that you can touch, stand on, and use to visualize your deck project. McCray is your local lumber yard. Our experienced and knowledgeable team will answer your questions and find solutions for all your building needs. From new construction to remodels, McCray has been Lawrence's answer for all things building related for over 70 years. Don't settle for the big box runaround. Get it right with McCray Lumber in Lawrence. Are you ready to purchase a new home or refinance your current home? Applying for a mortgage at First State Bank and Trust is as easy as one, two, three. One, simply log on to the First State Bank and Trust website and complete the, your application online in the comfort of your own home. Two, click the submit button and your information will be reviewed for instant online approval. And three, a First State Bank and Trust loan officer will follow up to answer any of your questions. First State Bank and Trust's goal is to provide the highest level of service at competitive rates. They offer a wide variety of loans and can customize loans for unique borrowers and have non-traditional mortgage terms available as needed. Loan officers are only a phone call away, so pick up the phone and let the friendly folks at First State Bank and Trust help you secure your dream home. 785-597-5151 or 1-800-463-7782. AM Corporation has been providing quality construction services since the early 1950s, from small culvert replacement jobs to complex highway interchange projects. They have completed projects for cities, counties, and state agencies. Their experienced teams of project personnel and extensive construction equipment fleet are well positioned to handle grading projects of any size. The Ham Company has skilled rock excavation crews who make drilling, blasting, removing, and transportation of even the toughest rock ledges look easy. Some of the recent excavation, construction, and site prep projects include the Mars Chocolate Factory in Topeka, Kansas, the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility in Manhattan, Kansas, and the West Star Energy Center in Emporia. If you are in need of large-scale excavation, asphalt construction, asphalt resurfacing, or erosion control, give the Ham Company a call at 785-597-5111.
And almost ready for kickoff here. Again, the uh, cause have, will be receiving. Turn this down, get a little feedback. So the Tigers will be kicking off. Tigers going left to right. Cause going right to left on the screen this evening. Again, a beautiful evening here for homecoming at Perry LeCompton High School. Back deep to receive for the cause. Looks like number 38, that's Shane Quinlan. Number three, Maloney. And here's your kick. It's going to be fielded by Quinlan. Picked up around the five-yard line. He's going to the left side looking for Saroom. Breaks through. He's got some speed trying to get up the sideline. Going to be still on his feet. I thought he stepped out of bounds. He's not. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10. And number 38, Shane Quinlan returns the opening kickoff for a touchdown. So just like that, cause jump in front six to zero. You know, Sean, Sean Booz, number 44, had one shot at him, and he missed him, and after that, Quinlan was gone. Didn't take very long, did it, Coach? No, it did not. So the senior, number 35, Toby Meyer, on to attempt the point after. Quinlan, after that long touchdown return on the kickoff, is going to uh, be able to go down on one knee to spot the ball. Get a little breather here. There you go. <laughs> I'm not sure how restful that can be, but. Uh, you know, not to jinx anyone, this has almost become automatic this year. Yes, it has. And here we go. Ready for the snap. Snap is down, kick is up, and Myers' kick is through. So 7-0 to zero in the first quarter, 11.46 remaining. Let's that shorten your home improvement wish list. Screen porch, deck, that. front door, windows, team, finished basement, room addition. Turning your current time. home into your dream home or building it from the ground up. Start something well, great. great at McCray Lumber. From drafting to delivery, we can even recommend the right guys for the job. Ask about our expert drafting service and anything else the McCray crew can help with. We're just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street. McCray Lumber, the building supplier that supplies more than building materials. We deliver dreams done right. As uh, we come back from our commercial break again, we're just sitting here talking about the speed on this team. And, and I tell you, Coach Landis, you, you hit it on there. This is a fun team to watch this year. Yeah, it, this is one of those teams that the expectations may have been high, but this team may outperform those expectations. Yeah. So Toby, My Toby Meyer spotting the ball up to 40, ready to kick off, back deep. Uh, for Atchison County. Again, these uh, numbers this evening are going to be kind of hard to see. Uh, so we'll just have to play along. Myers kicks a good one. Going to be fielded right out around the 23-yard line. Number 44 for Atchison County takes the ball up to the 30 where he is met by a host of caught defenders, and that was Sean Boos on the kickoff return. Yeah, there were a, there were a lot of blue jerseys there. I just didn't get any specific one that uh, made that tackle. Again, the Cod defense anchored up front a couple of seniors. That's number 70, Kyle Bonham, and I believe Mason Rohde, number 73. Behind them, the two linebackers uh, leading the team in tackles. That's number 7, Grant Roush, and 55, Sean Urban. Tigers coming out with two back set, quarterback under center. Motion 21. Going right to left, quick dive play up the middle. Big fullback has some room still on his feet, going right at the 50-yard line, taking the ball down to the 48 of the cause. So a nice first down run by number 44, Sean Boos. I think he was, she was tripped up by Shane Quinlan, but that was a, almost a, probably a score-saving tackle too. You know, offense, Coach, you probably got to see a lot of look. kind of looks like a split-back veer type of look or a wing T. What would you call that? Um, I'd call it the veer look. I mean, sweep coming this way. Again, trying to get to the corner is the uh, Tiger running back. Quinlan again on the tackle. Number eight as you're running back that time. That's Tucker Smith. 
Smith picks up about eight yards on that play, seven yards, Amen. bringing up a second and three. Ver two very nice runs. And your second down play, this time the back's offset to the left side, a wing on the right. It's going to be a give to the fullback. That's Boos, where he's stacked up quickly, probably use, loses a yard on that play. Yeah. He's trying to zoom that in a little bit and go down away from the side. Mason Rohde was in on that tackle as well as uh, our big end on that side, number 80, that would be Cole Logan. Cole's pretty active last week. Had a lot of tackles involved on a lot of stops. Yes, he was. And in fact, I believe this is Cole's first week to start. He uh, earned himself a starting position there at that defensive end. Here's your third down play. Again, a give to the running back trying to sweep around the right side. Has a little bit of room, but he's been met by number seven. That's Grant Roush on the tackle. Defense is kind of stiffened up here. Grant Rash was right outside, didn't allow a lot of gain on that play. Got to bring up a fourth and we'll call it a, a four. Yeah. Long three, short four. Call it what you want. Hey, yeah. you got to get the first down <laughs> if you want right. to keep hold the ball. Uh, quarterback tries to go straight ahead, flag down the play. I think they had a little bit of movement on that. Let's see what our official tells us. He certainly went on a quick count. Yep. Everybody wasn't set. And that is your call. Going to be a, uh, a legal procedure. A little false start there on the Tigers. That's going to take them back five. Fourth and nine now coming up. Well, it's a real long nine on this one. <laughs> yes, it is. No matter what you call it, it is a long nine. <laughs> And a little shotgun formation, going to look to throw over the middle. That ball almost picked off by number 55, Sean Urban. So ball falls incomplete. The cause will take over on downs here. You know, that's not a bad call uh, to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. With today's offenses, uh, you can pick up a lot of yards in, in a hurry. You're right. I mean, and, and again, they're on the, uh, you know, on the Perry Lecompton side of the 50, so... Uh, good place to go for it the only thing is they did have the wind at their back uh, a decent punt here you could pin the mm -hmm. cause deep so two receivers set each side for the cause Callum in the backfield of quarterback going to give ball on the ground but the whistle blows it dead they're going to call a false start on the cause Looks like somebody over on that far side just started up a little bit early got a little bit too much of a jump coach yeah uh, and I, I suppose it was the whistle that created the, the apparent fumble because uh, they didn't even dive for the ball. They knew it was uh, dead. Well, we'll try it again. And what do we have there? That was the right up the gut was Tyler Erickson. Yeah. He made back all the yards lost on that penalty. It is now what? Second and ten? Yeah. Second and ten coming up for the cause. Let's see what we got here. Straight ahead again for Tyler Erickson, churning ahead, picking up about seven or eight on that second down play. Gonna bring up a third and two. Tyler was carrying August Schultz on his back and still managed to make up what? About six, seven yards yeah. seven yards there. More like a third and three, perhaps. And three receivers set to the right. Ty Packard coming in motion this way. Kellum going to keep the ball up the middle. Has a little bit of room. Breaking to the outside, still on his feet. Takes the ball up to the 34-yard line of the Tigers. Um, I think that was Tucker Smith. I think it was number eight, Tucker Smith, on that tackle. Yes, it was. Two receivers each side. Packard in motion again. Kellum to give. Got a couple flags down. 
And again, another false start on the Perry LeCompton offense. You know, JB, we really have not had a lot of uh, illegal procedure penalties no. this, this year. I don't think it's been a, uh, an especial problem. Uh, yeah, I, I can't tell. Is, is it uh, is it up front on the interior line, or is it more of a, a receiver out there jumping a little well, bit? Well, I haven't seen it, so the question is maybe, maybe the motion man's going in motion too soon. I don't mm -hmm. know. I haven't. I couldn't tell either. Three receivers said, Kellum, quick throw out to 38, Quinlan. He's got the ball on the far side, trying to get up to that first down marker. Again, Quinlan on his feet, steps out of bounds. And had he not stepped out of bounds, I think he was going to score again, Coach. Yeah, yeah, I think the sideline was the worst enemy there. He, he just stepped out of bounds, apparently, and otherwise he's gone. Going to bring up a second and six. Three receivers to the left for Kellum. Quinlan in motion. Give to Tyler Erickson, right side. He's got some room. The senior rolling forward, still on his feet. Ball inside the 15. And the the tackler was number two. No, no. He, those orange numbers are hard to see on those. Uh, hard to see. Right? Number 21 was a tackler, Jaden Lee. Jaden Lee's a senior. Kellum going to throw this time out in the flat to Quinlan. Quinlan getting to the corner, reaching out and stepping out of bounds just inside of the one-yard line, so just short of another touchdown. Yeah. Number four, Levi Novinsky on the coverage, just not quickly enough, but he was able to knock him down before the score. The ball setting, that's going to be a first and goal for the Perry LeCompton offense. Kellum shifting Erickson over to his left side. Two receivers each side. Packard in motion. A give to the fullback. Erickson straight ahead. In for the call. Touchdown. Meyer again on for the, the point after attempt. Here's a snap, a little fumble. Meyer picks it up, and he's going to be taken down. So, again, a little bit of a <laughs> snap. So does that make him just one for one? Does <laughs> <laughs> that, make make that make him 17 for 19 now? Yeah, but. No, not really. And he really didn't attempt that, that kick. Wasn't, I don't we'll count that. That wasn't the kick. That was. I'm just kidding. I think the boot's right, though. I think we might have jinxed him because I actually put the points up on the board and didn't get him right. So we'll, we'll check that one off. That's my fault. Had Toby gotten the kick away, I think it would have gone through. I so. think it would have. So, you know, with that number of attempts, that's still – average is still pretty good for the cause on yes, kicks. Yes, it on, is. On points and as, as a kicker, he's, he's still – hey, it, you know, you're going to miss one once in a while anyway. You bet. So 727 left in the first. Your score, Perry LeCompton 13, Atchison County 0. Again, as we get going here, we uh, have some good help in the booth. Got Easton Elliott on the camera again tonight. As mentioned earlier, Coach Landis on my right side helping us out. And as always, our, our tech producer is what we like to call him, Will Gantz, up here with us. And Mark Armstrong will be trying to get some shots here from the sideline if we can get everything up and going as we've done in the past. I know a lot of you have commented on on his footage from the sideline and his interviews at halftime have been outstanding. Toby Meyer ready to kick off for his third kick off, kick off already this game. Meyer's kick sailing down against that wind, going to be fielded right at the 22. Ball is bobbled, picked up again by number 21. A lot of blue jerseys circling around, and they're going to take the ball carry down at the 25. Jaden Lee bobbled the ball a little bit, was not able to make anything out of that. What, about five yards on that return? The Tigers, first and 10, ball to 26. Caw defense gets the signal from Coach Swafford. They are set and ready to go. In more of a tight look offensive formation, quarterback under center, two backs behind him. It's going to be a give to the left side. Stacked up quickly, that's number 55, Urban, in on that tackle. 
I'm sure that uh, Coach Paramore is very happy that Scott Urban uh, moved to this neck of the woods. Yes, he is. He's been an outstanding addition to this Cough football team. Again, Coach, we talked before the game, the linebacker play with the Cause has been outstanding. Again, you've got Roush and Urban, and, and again, coming quickly uh, to spell any of those two when they get tired, it's been the freshman Hayden Robb who's had a good season. Yeah, but, well, the three line, those three linebackers are leading the, le leading the team in tackles. More of a spread look. Quarterback in the shotgun formation, flags down, and we're going to get yet another illegal procedure call here and stop play. I see the cause on the front line there defensively, both uh, uh, Colin Resilian and Chris Boyden. Mm -hmm. Good, solid play inside. You know, that's one of the things that allows those linebackers to, to stay free and make those tackles, too. Yeah, those big fellas up, play, uh, up front are taking up space. Uh, two receivers set to each side back in motion. And it's going to be given to the motion back, trying to get to the corner. Uh, the cause fly up quickly, and you have a gang tackle there on that ball carry. It's number 19, Joe Guess, number 16, Ty Packard, and number 7, Grant Roush in on that play. And Rosillian was the one who put on initial pressure, and even though he couldn't catch him, uh, he was making that quarterback run for his life. And let's see the formation the Tigers show here. Two receivers set to the far side. Two stacked up on the right. Shotgun formation. Going to be a passing play. Look to get it out to the left side. That ball overthrown. Almost intercepted. Intercepted there. Uh, looks like Kellum, number 20, almost got that ball into his hands. Yeah. Fourth and long for the Tigers. So they will be in punt formation as they are deep in their own territory here. When you got the wind at your back and you're deep in your own territory, you're probably going to punt it. And flags down again. Another. Guess what it was? Illegal procedure? I think that's yeah. what the call was. I, I, apparently, these two teams are not satisfying the official's concept of a specific rule. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to hear what the calls are all about. I don't see it. Maybe somebody's lining up off sides. And that's... That's, it's pretty easy to crowd that neutral zone. So again, another punt attempt, and ball is away, and it's going to be fielded by number 20. That's Dalton Kellum, a junior, looking to get the sideline using that speed. Flag comes flying in on the far side. Kellum takes the ball down right at the 14-yard line. Let's see what the call is is here from that, our official. That flag landed way back at about the 30, what, 33, 34 mm -hmm. yard line, so. Gonna call a block, personal foul. So they'll bring that ball and mark it off from somewhere around the 33, I believe. Yeah, to go from the flag, five, 10, almost back to the 48. Let's see what we got. Looks like they uh, marked off a couple extra yards on that one. Yeah, that's going to be spotted at the 49. That's kind of like the seven-yard penalty last week that we had <laughs> um, for offsides. Well, that does happen. <laughs> Two receivers set each side for the cause. That's going to be Quinlan in motion, going a little bit deep motion. Ball given to Erickson, trying to go straight ahead. Senior number 32, Tyler Erickson, is going to pick up about five on that first down carry. Sean Boos met him strong in the hole, but he just couldn't stop him from making that five yards. And no huddle here. Cause moving quickly here in the first quarter with 5-10 left. Kellum going to throw, looking down the right sideline, looking for Quinlan. Quinlan hauls it in at the 20. Still on his feet, he steps out of bounds right at the 15. Knocked out of bounds by number 20, Vernon Seard. Not in time. So they made back all the yards that they lost and more. Yep. 
16-yard pass play there for Kellum and Quinlan. Three receivers set to the left, left side. Quick pass out here to Maloney, number three. And he is tripped up right at the 14. Looks like he picks up two on that first down play. Two receivers set each side for, Colum, for Kellum. And the give is going to be Erickson. He'll try to play up the middle, still on his feet, taking the ball down at the to the five-yard line is Tyler Erickson. Number 44 and number two were both in on that tackle. That was Matthew Oswald, number two, and 44 is Sean Boos. And the big fella up front, Kyle Bonham, having a good night pushing people around, Coach. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of drive off that front line. Well, then in motion... Kellum's going to keep the ball, getting up the middle and stepping in for another Perry LeCompton touchdown. Okay. I'm not going to say anything about Toby this time. We're not going to jinx no, him. Not, not going to say a word. Not going to touch the scoreboard. We're going to see what happens here. Kick is up, and it's true. So 424 left in this opening quarter. Uh, your score already quickly, Perry LeCompton 20, the Tigers 0. Well, coaches, as we look at this, again, these first two games, they've been kind of lopsided and, and less – Something changes here. This one appears to be headed that way also. Yeah. So if, if you're a coach on this one, on the cost side of it, anything you're looking for, things you're trying to do here? Well, I, a couple things. Number one, you don't want anybody to get hurt. So you want to make sure everybody's fresh, get a lot of guys in, get some extra playing time. But, but the other thing is you don't want to be complacent. You know, sometimes being good is, is – great as long as you're playing teams that aren't as good when we get those tough games coming mm -hmm. up we got to be ready to play so that's what he's doing i guarantee you coaches out there uh he's he's telling those guys we can't ease up we have to play 100 percent right. every down and again toby meyer stepping up to kick off this kick again going right into a very strong wind coming out of the south this evening Myers' kick is up in the air, kind of hangs in the air a little bit, filled it up to 21. Number 44, boosts on that, takes the ball out of bounds. Grant Roush on the tackle again. Tell you, 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 there's a few guys out there that you call their names all the time on tackles. Yes. Just they, kind of show up, don't they? They, they? Just, they like to be around the ball, and they, they either want to uh, carry it or they want to push somebody out. So, Nice job. You know, that's one thing we haven't mentioned much, but the, the cause special teams have done a pretty good job this year. Outstanding job. Okay, for the Tigers, quarterback under center, two backs behind him. Going to be a give trying the left side. Trying to sweep around that corner. He's going to be shut down. Looks like a couple of people on that tackle. One was uh, number 60. Yeah, number 60, is that, that is. 68 or 60. And then 58 was Hayden Robb. Yeah, probably 68, Boyden. Boyden, yep, that's him. Yeah, Coach Allen was telling me today that we have some outstanding tackles up front, and he's one of the guys he mentioned. Second down and nine for the Tigers. And, again, it'll give up the middle, tries to get to the corner now. Taken out of bounds by number 16, Ty Packard. Yeah, blocking scheme works. Ball carrier, so that's going to be good for a first down. Ball setting at the 44. 324 and running here in the first quarter. Up the middle again is the Tiger running back, and he, he's met 
by a, quite a few Perry LeCompton defenders there. And I do see Grant Roush again in on that tackle as one of those. That first down play, uh, the Tigers lost one second and we'll call it 11 here coming up, long 11. Pass play going over the middle. That ball falls incomplete over the head of the intended receiver. I think that was going to 44, wasn't it, uh, Boos? It looked like it, Coach. Kind of, it did kind of split a couple of guys. Third down and 11 coming up. For Atchison County. Third down and 12 for Atchison County. Quarterback in a shotgun formation this time. Back setting to his left side. Two receivers to the far right. Looking to throw to his right. Has the ball completed out on the flat. Number 21 for the Tigers. Jaden Lee, Lee. Who was that on that tackle? That was... Uh, I thought I saw 15. I'm not Fourth and eight coming up for the Tigers. Just got a score update. Uh, the game between Holton and Nemaha Central. Nemaha Central up 14 to zero on the Holton Wildcats in the first quarter. Snap is a little high. Gets away from the punter. That ball Ooh. is going to be quickly on the ground and recovered by the cause at the 30-yard line. On the recu recovery was number 57 for Perry LeCompton. Corey Shackelford that covers that ball. And it was like Do Dwyer, the first one back there that knocked the quarterback yeah. off the ball, although it would have been call ball regardless. Yes. Fourth down. A lot of pressure. I think Corey had visions of taking that ball away himself. Or, I'm sorry, Dyke had visions of taking the ball away himself. Two receivers set each side for the cause. Packard in motion. Give to Tyler Erickson right up the middle. Erickson still on his feet trying to reach that goal line, but he's going to be taken down at the five. Jaden Lee on that tackle. He trying to split, split two guys, and Jaden Lee was able to get him. So cause pick up another first down. The ball will be setting at the five, first and goal for the Perry LeCompton offense. Kellum, your quarterback, Erickson, shifts to his left. Packard in motion, a give to 32. Tyler Erickson straight ahead in for a caw touchdown. Yeah. Fourth touchdown of the quarter. So actually a few more points on the board here in this first quarter than last week. Last week, if I remember correctly, it was 21 in the first, 21 in the second. Does that sound right? Yeah, it sounds about uh, right. So 132 left in the first here. Calls are setting at 26. Toby Meyer looking to add one more point on the scoreboard for Perry LeCompton. And Meyer's kick straight through the uprights to bring your score 27 to 0, 132 remaining. And the truth is, he, every every time he's kicked the ball, he's scored a point this yeah. year. Let's see if we can get a uh, quick commercial in here, Coach. Okay, we are back. Again, 132 remaining, 27-0 your score. And that reminds me, I need to uh, update this scoreboard here. Mason Robb in to kick off for the cause. Here's Robb kicks. 
Nice kick from Mason Robb, taking the ball down to inside the 15. Number 21 returns that for the Tigers out to the 30. 21 is Jaden Lee. Now, Coach, just looking around, another really nice crowd here tonight for this homecoming game. Perry LeCompton, always nice to see the folks turn out. Yeah, and I think homecoming is always special for a lot of people. Tigers first and ten here. Ball given to, looks like, 44 boost coming this way. Or is that number four? That's four. number four. I don't know if you Levi saw Novinsky. Ty Packard all the way from the backside caught him from behind, was in on that tackle. I'm not saying he brought him down, but right. that was a good that was that was a lot of effort by Ty. Gain of one on that first down play. Second nine now coming up for the Tigers. Two backs in the backfield behind the quarterback. Ratchison County. We have a little reverse play up the middle. Third and four coming up. There we go. And let's see what the Tigers have here for this uh, third down play. Five seconds in the quarter. They do get the play off. And maybe not. Flag coming in. Still going to be two seconds left on that clock regardless. Wind the clock here, so yeah, it will be the last play. This will take us down to the end of the first quarter. So as we come to an end here of quarter one, your score from Perry LeCompton High School: the Cause 27, and the Atchison County Community High School Tigers zero. State Bank and Trust is an independent community bank serving the Perry community, Jefferson County, and Douglas County for many years. They have a long history of community service dating back to 1934. And that service continues today in seven locations throughout Northeast Kansas. Those locations are Perry, Lawrence, Tonganoxie, Baser, and Kansas City, Kansas. They offer a full array of financial products and services delivered by local banking professionals. Are you looking to purchase a new vehicle or better yet, to purchase a vehicle for your students? Let First State Bank and Trust help make this process an easy one. They offer same-day approvals, new low rates, and the convenience of having payments charged directly from your checking account. Be sure to stop by the Perry branch at 402 Plaza Drive in Perry, Kansas, or give them a call at 785-597-5151. Again, back here for the start of the second quarter. Tigers still with the ball. Give up the middle and quickly wrapped up and taken down. Little to no gain, maybe even a, a short loss on that play. That was number 73, Mason Rohde, Cole Logan, number 80. And on that tackle, there was another third jersey I missed. Three guys around the ball. Defensive coaches just love that. <laughs> Second and 11 coming up. 
Tigers looking to move the ball a little bit, looking to throw to the right side, gets it out there in the flat and quickly taken down after the completion. Drew Ledbetter on that tackle. A lot of pressure right up the middle. Did you see who that was? I couldn't. I didn't pick that up, Coach. Yeah. I, the Cole, Cole Logan, Logan, I believe, we're hearing up here. Yeah. Number 80. Does that surprise you? No, not at all. Nope. Great game last week and looking to have another one here tonight. Time the Tigers come out, two receivers split wide to the left side, two to the top of the screen. Shotgun formation for the quarterback, looking to throw to the right side. Quickly, a little swing pass out to the right. Number two, Drew Ledbetter knocks him out of bounds before he gets the first down marker. Going to bring up a fourth and about three, if I see that marked where I think it's going to be. Second tackle in a row for Drew. Yeah, we'll call it fourth and four here. Well, I can imagine they're going to run this ball or, or throw, but I don't think the wind's so strong that they won't consider all options. Mm -hmm. Tigers going for this. Quarterback trying to sneak straight ahead, and he is blasted wow. before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Cole Logan, and it looks no, like number 58. 58. <laughs> That's the freshman stepping in there with a big hit. Yes, Aiden he is. Rob. Doesn't surprise me. Cole Logan, again, that is a uh, L.O., and we are playing Big 7 football. Yeah, and, and you know, that's tough football. Yeah. It really is an outstanding. Did they move that ball back? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand that. Wow. Okay. Motion here coming. It's going to be Grant Roush. Kellum picks up the ball in low snap. He's on his feet looking to outrun everybody. He's at the 20, at the 10, and he's in for a touchdown. Number 20, Dalton Kellum putting more points on the board for the Perry LeCompton cause. First offensive play from scrimmage for the cause in the second quarter. Uh, you know, sometimes you can't do anything wrong, and it apparently the cause are in that mode tonight. Uh -huh. Toby Meyer, oh, oh, another high snap. This one's going to be getting away, so no point after attempt. So I, I do know one thing Coach Paramore is going to want to work on this week. Yep. Going to work snap. on those snaps. Snap. That's two of them this game yeah. here. That's going to save you. Got to get a little better on that. So let's update this scoreboard while we're here again. 10.09 left in the second quarter. 33 to nothing. Now your score. It is little things like that that make the difference. Okay, calls coming out again for another kickoff. Let's see, looks like Mason Robb, number 42. You know, Mason was kicking off last week, and he, his first few kicks were kind of on the ground, not, not very yep. deep. And then he settled down and kind of got into it, had some good kickoffs. First one tonight, outstanding, very uh, good. Yeah, for going right into a strong win. Yes. That was an excellent kick, so this time the win will be at, at his back. You know, when you relax and you don't try to overkick, sometimes you get some really good kicks into the, into the wind. This is going to be with the wind. And here's your kick. Rob has a nice kick here going all the way down inside of the 10-yard line. Looks going to be filled in and tried to return. Tiger, return man, trying to get the left side. And he's taken down by number 10. I believe that's a Williams, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's Dawson Williams, and he was right back there. You know, I'll tell you what, the team speed, if you can kick the ball that deep, you're going to be able to, you know, we'll be covering people inside the 20-yard line just as we did here. 
And if you remember last week, Dawson coming off a nice game where he had an interception return for a touchdown. Well, we see a tough defense out there facing the Tigers again. First and 10, ball setting at the 20. And a handoff trying to get the outside coming up quickly. Two caught defenders. That's 19, Joel Guess, yeah. and number 20, Dalton Kellum. You know, Coach, for a second, looked like uh, number four, Novinsky, is going to have some room, and then all of a sudden it just shut down. Yeah. I, I tell you, our corners and, and what's uh, what's Joel? Is it Joel strong safety? Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, they, they've been making some outstanding reads coming up when they need to. He's filling. Second and 11 coming up for the Tigers. Here's a pass play going down the sideline, well covered and almost ooh, picked ooh. off. Nice job. There was just nowhere to go with that. I believe was that 83, Landon Johnson Landon on that Landon Johnson coverage? tipped that ball in the air and between almost he got and it. whoever else was back there with him almost picked it off. And don't forget tonight, uh, we will have try to film the homecoming ceremonies. Uh, the sound might be a little tricky to get to you. We do have a speaker outside, but the wind is playing a little havoc with that. Pass play attempted to the right side. Tipped up again. Again, covered there by number 83, Landon Johnson. And that time, the tip almost went back to the hey. Tiger receiver. But Quinlan, Quinlan had that pass read. He just wasn't able to make the interception. And, of course, Atchison County almost then. Mm -hmm. Caught that after it was tipped, and that had been pretty clear sailing. It's time, 4th and 11, punting formation for the Tigers. The punter setting right inside of the 10-yard line, going against a stiff wind again. Punt is away, has a nice low kick, takes a couple of bounces, and Quillen is just going to let this one die right at the 47-yard line. Cause have had outstanding starting field position mm -hmm. every time tonight. And let's see, uh, got a few new faces mixing in here. It looks like uh, for quarterback stepping in for Kellum is going to be the freshman number 12. I believe that's Billy Welch. Erickson still in as a running back. Drew Ledbetter, Shane Quinlan will be your receivers on the bottom of your screen. Looks like Roush and trying to get 84. Coach, who's at 84? 84 is Alec Atchison. Alec Atchison at, at the top of the screen. Two receivers each side. Roush in motion. A give. No, it's going to be Welch keeping the ball straight up the middle. Freshman has some running room. Nice gain there on first down. Going to pick up 11 or 12. Let's see where they spot it. Going to call it 11 for the gain and good enough for a Perry Lecompton first down. Three receivers set to the right for Welch. Erickson in the backfield with him. Quick pass out here to Grant Roush. Pretty well covered, but Grant fighting free, trying to pick up some yards. Number 21 in on the tackle there, Jaden Lee. Grant made a nice move, though, back to the inside mm -hmm. and then cut it up. I was going to say last time, Billy Welch is kind of known, has was known in middle school here for his passing attempt. And uh, Coach Jordan Allen told me this week, the funny thing is we've been working on his running a lot. And, and it first showed up. At that first play. Seven fifty nine remaining here in the second quarter. Clock will be stopped. Official wants to check something out. Not sure what. Everything appears to be in check. Winding the clock. 
And here we go. Second down <coughs> and nine play coming up for the call offense. Quinlan in motion. A give this time to Tyler Erickson. Flags come flying in. Ball stripped away from Erickson. Picked up by the Tiger defender taken down to the 25. It was, is that 32? 22. That's uh, Tristan Myers, I believe, for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Grant Rouse did an outstanding job of, of tackling from behind. Showed some speed. I think they were going to call holding on that play, so the Tigers will yeah. decline the penalty. They will take the ball, and they will have some good field position here. Yep. Ball setting at the 25, first and 10 for the Tigers. I didn't see the fumble, whether it was a strip or just a drop, but irrelevant now. Quarterback under center, two backs behind him, offset to the left. Going to be a sweep to the right, number eight, looking to get to the corner. And has a little bit of room over there on the right side. Yeah. Nice yeah. gain. Nice gain on the first down. Looks like he picks up four or five. We'll call it five. Second down and five coming up for the Tigers. Ball setting now at the 20. 720 remaining on the clock here until halftime. Receiver wide to the left. Two back in the backfield behind the quarterback. Give and met quickly. That's oh. number 80. Yeah, Cole Logan. Cole Logan. Yet Mason Rohde getting up off the ground also, so he he landed he landed a little support. Oswald, the quarterback, number two, facing a third and seven. A little reverse play to the inside to 22 for the Tigers, Ooh. and he is met with a physical tackle. Okay. That is number 16, Ty Packer, yeah. on a textbook <laughs> form tackle. That was e that's exactly what it was, textbook. Drove through his man and took him to the ground. Beautiful. Six minutes now remaining in the second quarter. Fourth down coming up for the Tigers. They will need five yards to keep this drive alive, so let's see how the caw defense responds. And Oswald under center, two back set. Jumped a little early, no flags down. Pressure on the quarterback. Throws it in the air, almost picked up by Packard. Packard it was expecting that ball to come out a little faster, jumped up to deflect it. And it was just one of those slow motions. He just couldn't jump again yeah. in time. So regardless, good defense on that. The cause will take over on downs. The Tigers cannot advance to the first down marker. So uh, no points on the board yet for Atchison County. And I'm sure Ty saw that whole thing in slow motion too because he was just there for, <laughs> for the taking. He did have somewhat of an open field in front of him too. Yes, he did. I would, uh, I would say he was kind of licking his chops to speak for that to come down. Two receivers set each side. Looks like Kellum back in here now at quarterback for the cause. Roush in motion, a give to the fullback, Erickson up the middle. So straight ahead on that dive play. Picks up about four on first down. Oh. Maybe a short four. Short four. Ball again taken by Erickson straight ahead. Not much of a gain there. Did I see a flag? I couldn't tell. Yeah, I must think be I saw clock a flag. Stopping. It's where you would see a hold or a face mask. Right there at the line of scrimmage where the at the hole. And the officials conferring here. Wave the flag Wait, off. Wave I love off. to see that. No flag. No flag 
Kellum checking the sideline, getting the signals. Two receivers each side. Straight ahead, no motion. Ball quick out to Landon Johnson, trying to get up to that first down marker. And he does have a Perry LeCompton first down. Ball going to be spotted right at the 35. Levi Nowinski was in on that tackle. Got it outside, but not in time. 4.50 remaining in the second quarter. 33 to zero, your score. Three receivers to the left side. Quinlan in motion. Kellum gonna keep the ball, trying to go straight ahead. Still on his feet. He busts through the tackle. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20. Dalton Kellum is going to ease in for another Perry LeCompton touchdown. I tell you, Sean Boos read the play, came over and latched on to Kellum, but not hard enough because Kellum just shook him free. Yeah, you got to wrap up. Yeah. And that kid, it's, uh, he's kind of known for that. So another point after attempt. Again, Toby Meyer, the senior, on to kick. Hopefully uh, we have a good snap here. Quinlan looking for a ball to go right to his hand so he can put it down for Meyer. Good snap. It's down, up, and through. 4.30 left in the second. Your score here, Fairleigh Compton High School. The cause 40, the Tigers 0. That well, again, quickly looking ahead at halftime tonight, we will have the crowning ceremonies. I'm trying to remember here. I, I believe the uh, candidates, I think Joel Guest, Megan Fast, Swan, Tyler Erickson, Kara Coleman, Lindy Kelly, and Toby Baker. I believe that's correct. If that's getting off the top of my head, if I messed one, I apologize. Uh, don't have that in front of me, but just wanted to make sure some of those kids get a little recognition here. And again, we will try to cover that with our camera at halftime. Mason Robb kicking off for Perry LeCompton. And Mason Robb set to kick, ball at the 40. Again, another nice kick for Robb. Ball filled it right at the 10 yard line. Trying to get to the right side is the Tiger returner. Taken down around the 26-yard line. That's Joel Guess, wasn't it? It looked like it. Got a little better return than I thought. Taken out to the 29. Update in Big 7 League scores. Nemaha Central 21, Holton 8. And here's a play. Sweep try to the left side. Closed up quickly. Looks like number 83, Landon Jans Johnson. Number 7, Grant Roush. 55, Sean Urban all in on that. Yeah. They had that play sniffed out early. Closed in, made the tackle. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be more than a one-yard gain. It did. That's, that's all they got out of it. Looking to pass to the right side, out in the flat, covered by number 19, Joel Guess. Yeah, right on top of it. Gain of one or two on that. Going to bring up a third down. Meyer on the pass reception for Atchison County.
defensively, you put yourself in a position to kind of anticipate a pass. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. But right. I wouldn't want to be facing Cole Logan if he knew if he was going <laughs> to throw it. Two receivers set out here looking to pass under some pressure. Skips the ball out. Ball picked up for a completion. Gain of one. Fourth down and about f five. Coming up. And punting formation for the Tigers. And here's the kick. A little bit shorter kick this time. Hits the ground, bounces once. Not going to be returned by the cause. It's number three, Maloney and 16, Ty Packard. We're back deep looking to return that punt. Two sixteen left in the second quarter. Kellum in a quarterback here. Three receivers set to his right. Also in the backfield, thirty two, Tyler Erickson to Kellum's right. Quick pass out to Ty Packard. Packard trying to break some tackles, trying to get free and gain a few yards. Looks like he gains a t couple on that first down play. Yeah, and you know, there was a, there was good pressure put on by the Tigers, and, and Erickson was right there with the block, kick him free for a nice game. You know, right now the important thing is hold hold the ball, mm -hmm. be successful, run some time off the clock, and you gotta still hope that you can score, work to score. 145 and counting here in this second quarter. Kellum calls for the ball. Going to be a quick dive play up the middle for Erickson. Erickson still on his feet, rambling. He's down the sideline looking to go all the way. He's at the 20, yeah. at the 10, and he is in on his feet. Tyler Erickson, the senior running back, takes it in for another Perry LeCompton touchdown. You know, as you said, a quick dive play, but as soon as you clear the secondary, He's got the speed. He can make it happen. Yeah. He did. Oh. Toby Meyer, the kicker on. Shane Quinlan on to put this ball down. And kick is up, and no good, just wide to the left on that. Experience counts at McCray Lumber. Some of those box store employees weren't even born yet when most of the McCray crew were already experts. And today all of them are the cream of the crop when it comes to smarts. Your building project is important. You want the best advice, not somebody's best guess. So do it the McCray way. Come see us just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street. You might run into somebody you know. McCray Lumber, the building supplier that supplies more than building materials. We deliver dreams done right. And again, coming back here for another kickoff. And again, in the first half, it has been all Perry LeCompton. They are ahead of Atchison County 46 to 0 here in this first half. Is that Mason Robb again kicking off for the cause, I believe, Coach? I think so. Okay. Yeah. And here's Rob's kick, a little bit lower kick, skips a couple times, picked up at the 20. Going to the right side, the Tiger returned man on his feet, taking it out to the 35. Let's see where we mark that. First down. 37 yard line, so we'll start out here. So the Tigers have a minute and 20 seconds to try to get something on the board here before halftime. Yeah. 
And a sweep play to the right side. Tucker Smith takes it for a nice gain over there along the far sideline. Looks like that was Hayden Robb on that tackle. Number 58. Called second and five coming up for the Tigers. Smith did step out of bounds, so he, the clock does stop at 112 remaining here in this second quarter. And they give up the middle of dive play, but that is quickly shut down by the Cod defense. Ball is out. Packard has it. Let's see if they call him down. And they, they do. do. Yeah. Uh, say forward progress, and I would probably agree with that. Yeah. He was going back. Say forward progress was, was what they called. I do like the aggressive play, though. Yeah. Third and four coming up for the Tigers. Clock running, 45 seconds left in this first half. Two receivers set each side. Shotgun formation for Oswald. There's a snap looking to throw. Swing pass out to the right. That ball is covered, but not until Booz picks up the first down and stepping out of bounds to stop the clock with 28 seconds left. Ledbetter was there. Did a good job of coming up. Made sure... That Knocked him out of bounds. No score. Two receivers each side. Oswald again in the shotgun formation. Looking to throw again at the right side and quickly taken down <laughs> by number 80, Cole Logan. Yeah. Cole was right back there in <laughs> top of uh, Boom. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cole's big and tall. He's You can't see over him, even, even if you're a tall quarterback. Second down in 16 for Ashton County. It says he's 6'5 here. I swear he's Looks taller two, than three that. inches taller than that at least. <laughs> Yeah, and the Tigers are going to take that one to the end of the half. They're going to let the, the clock expire. So at halftime, your score here at Perry LeCompton High School, the cause 46, the Tigers 0. We do have co homecoming coming your way shortly. Ham Quarries provides quality finished limestone products that are required by the Kansas economy. For over 70 years, Ham has been a reliable producer of construction aggregates and using concrete, asphalt paving, foundation for building pads and homes. They have literally covered thousands of miles in county and township roads. Do you have a rock or gravel driveway too rough for your car? Let him help you find the type of rock material that is best suited for your drive. They can even help you calculate the amount of rock covering needed for your project right over the phone. So let's help that driveway get smooth again. You can connect through the company's website at nrham.com or give the ham company a call at 785-597-5111. Looking for a full-service bank who offers free checking? Then look no further. First State Bank and Trust Free Checking Account is a simple, convenient, no-frills account. This account features no service charge and no minimum balance. First State Bank and Trust also makes banking convenient with online banking and mobile apps. Once you sign up for online banking, you're able to use your mobile device. Just search for First State Bank and Trust in the App Store or Google Play. Stop by any of the First State Bank and Trust locations to open your account today. And don't forget to ask about the Cost Spirit Card. First State Bank and Trust, where banking is still a people business.
and the dance tonight. We also wish to welcome all the Perry La Compton students, parents, alumni, and community members, as well as our guests from Effingham to our Perry La Compton homecoming ceremony. Tonight, our first king and queen candidates are Shelby Baker and Lindy Kelly. Lindy Kelly is the daughter of Jenny and Mike Kelly. She is an active student who has been a member of Blue Crew, FBLA, and FBL. She was a part of the musical staff during the fall and has been a member of the PLHS choir for three years. Athletically, she is a member of the volleyball team for four years. Lindy is undecided on which college to attend, but wants to study psychology so that she can pursue her career as a mental therapist. Toby Baker. Toby Baker is the son of Angela and Jimmy Baker. He has been a member of the FBLA, FBLHS since his junior year and was a member of the football team his freshman year. In the winter, he has participated in basketball, while in the spring, he's a member of the track and field team. Toby plans to continue his post-secondary education to get a degree in business and marketing.
And again, congratulations to Joel Guess and Megan Fast being crowned the uh, homecoming, homecoming royalty here tonight. And now we're going to switch over real quick. We still have about nine minutes left in halftime. We're going to pick up uh, Mr. Armstrong's interview with Casey Packard, the high school and middle school cross-country coach. This is Mark Armstrong once again. Welcome to the third edition of the call preview. Tonight we'll be visiting with Casey Packard, the head cross-country coach from Perry Lake Compton. Casey, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Coach, perhaps it would be uh, interesting for our fans if you could give a general description of what cross-country is. For example, what's the typical length of a cross-country run and what's the topography like? Um, what Casey has established is a building foundation for distances. 7th mm -hmm. grade was one mile, 8th grade two miles, and high school was a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. And with this year, they've upped the ante, so to speak, where our 7th graders can now run two miles. Okay. So it's a building process of a length of the course. Uh, top topography, it just depends on what's available. Hills, mm -hmm. valleys, straightaways, okay. grass, roads, that whole kind of thing. <laughs> Makes it interesting for the runners. Yes. And so what would be a good time uh, for a varsity girl or a varsity boy runner in Sense Country? I know it depends upon the hills and things, but typically mm -hmm. what are we looking at? Um, usually if you can do a six to seven minute mile if you're a boy, um, a seven to eight minute mile if you're a girl, that's a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. And then it all depends on weather and conditions and kind of competition as well, uh, to how much you push yourself. Sure. So how does a team score points at a cross country meet? Um, typically at a varsity meet, you get to run seven runners. Mm -hmm. And the top five finishes, it literally is what place they cross is a point. So the better finish, the lower the points the better your team scores. So for instance, say you swept it, one, two, three, four, five, you add up those places, and that's your team score. It gets a little bit more complicated about individuals, but that's okay. basically how you do it. And typically, how many kids would medal? That's probably the size of the team. And it looks like our video here at halftime, we are not picking up audio of Coach Packard and Coach Armstrong. So we're gonna break away from this and see if we can get um, uh, a little bit of work done on this video and see if we can bring that back to you here just in a little bit. Quite a few. So I know um, last year's team, you had some, uh, some success last year you know, on the girls' side. And there was Online banking, automatic payments, and going green with electronic Bank. statement describes you, then First State Bank and Trust Elite account is just what you're looking for. This is one of First State Bank and Trust's most popular accounts. Why? Well, you earn extra money in your account each month. You meet a few simple requirements, such as setting up at least one direct deposit or automatic withdrawal, signing up for electronic account statements, using your debit card 15 times as a credit transaction, and logging in at least once a month to your online account. That's it. Sounds easy to me. Give First State Bank and Trust a call today at 785-597-5151 and set up your elite checking account and start earning money back in each month. You've got ideas, making plans, ready to turn that house into home sweeter home. Why not do it best with McRae Lumber? The best materials and the best people to provide solutions for any size project, from concept to completion. We're just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street, but our trucks are all over Northeast Kansas, because more and more people are doing things the McRae way. McRae Lumber, the building supplier that supplies more than building materials. We deliver dreams done right. And sanitary landfills have been providing safe and responsible waste disposal services to communities in Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska for over 25 years. Their local staff and frontline workforce ensure that their operations are professionally managed and are compliant with local, state, and federal regulations. The HAM environmentally safe landfill operation is based on extensive planning, management engineering, sound construction practices, and attendant facility operations. 
Ham's experience in designing, constructing, and operating the Ham Sanitary Landfill is one of the principal reasons that many counties and municipalities have chosen them to be their waste service provider. You see, not all communities have convenient access to waste disposal sites. In these cases, waste transfer stations are utilized to provide for a cost-effective and sustainable option for waste disposal. Ham provides transfer station services to 10 Kansas counties and the cities of Olathe, Kansas and Marysville, Missouri. Many of these transfer stations also have recycling drop-off centers where materials can be readied for processing and reuse. Ham also this offers is Mark Armstrong once again, and welcome to the third edition of the call preview. Tonight, we'll be visiting with Casey Packard, the head cross-country coach from Prairie Lake Compton. Casey, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Well, Coach, perhaps it'd be uh, interesting for our fans to, if you could give a general description of what cross country is. For example, what's the typical length of a cross country run and what's the topography like? Um, what Keisha has established is a building foundation for distances. Mm -hmm. Seventh grade was one mile, eighth grade two miles, and high school was a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. And with this year, they've upped the ante, so to speak, where our seventh graders can now run two miles. Okay. So it's a building process of a length of the course. Uh, the topography, it just depends on what's available. Hills, mm -hmm. valleys, straightaways, okay. grass, road, gravel, anything. <laughs> well, we are still having problems with the audio on the video, so, so we're going to switch over real quick uh, and see if we can uh, hear from uh, Coach Mike Paramore uh, right uh, right at the beginning of halftime here. a six to seven minute mile of your boy. Hey, Coach Paramore, we're here talking to you at halftime live and uh, seeing a lot of good things going on. But if I know you, there's always something to tweak, tweak at halftime. Uh, absolutely. At? You know, we've gone out and executed pretty well. We're a little bit sloppy. We got a few penalties that we shouldn't have. Those are just mental mistakes. We've jumped off sides a couple times, uh, giving them some free five yards. I, I like our kids' effort. I like our attitude how we're playing. We just got to clean up a few things. And you got to like those special teams. Yeah, they continue to do things, and that's something that we're really pressing and we work on, and uh, it's good to see those come out on Friday night and we're able to execute that. Thanks, Coach. Good luck second half. All right, thank you. Hey, Coach Paramore, we're here talking to you at halftime live and uh, seeing a lot of good things going on, but if I know you, there's always something to tweak, tweak at halftime. Uh, absolutely. You know, we've gone out and executed pretty well. We're a little bit sloppy. we got a few penalties that we shouldn't have. Those are just mental mistakes. We've jumped off sides a couple times. Uh, giving them some free five yards. I, I like our kids' effort. I like our attitude how we're playing. We just got to clean up a few things. And you got to like those special teams. Yeah, they continue to do things, and that's something that we're really pressing and we work on, and uh, it's good to see those come out on Friday night, and we're able to execute that. Thanks, Coach. Good luck second half. All right, thank you. Hey, Coach Paramore, we're here talking to you at halftime live and uh, seeing a lot of good things going on, but if I know you, there's a lot.
automatic payments, going green with electronic statement describes you, and First State Bank and Trust Elite account is just what you're looking for. This is one of First State Bank and Trust's most popular accounts. Why? Well, you earn extra money in your account each month. You meet a few simple requirements, such as setting up at least one direct deposit or automatic withdrawal, signing up for electronic account statements, using your debit card 15 times as a credit transaction, and logging in at least once a month to your online account. That's it. Sounds easy to me. Give First State Bank and Trust a call today at 785-597-5151 and set up your elite checking account and start earning money back in each month. Okay, we're ready to kick off the second half here. Again, your score coming back at halftime, 46 to 0. Cause on top of the Tigers. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Coach Lannis, I think we'll have a running clock here in this half. As the rules were explained last week, yes, that's what happens. Takes 40 points. And in the second half, these are two league schools. That, that's the league rule, so. Again, we apologize. We had some audio difficulty there with a couple of the videos at halftime. It uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get that fixed here uh, this evening. So we are going to work on that this week, and we'll try to get that out to everyone, perhaps even at the start of next week's broadcast for you. Mason Robb on to kick off to open up the second half here for the cause. And Tigers looking to get something going in this second half. Rob's kick is a nice one taken down at the 10-yard line. It's going to be a return trying to get the right sideline. Now breaking back to the left and some speed here catching up with the Tiger defender. That was number 10. Dawson Williams. Dawson Williams. Freshman. And a fast one. Very impressive. And again, we were going to talk stats, but obviously uh, stats in this game pretty lopsided for the cause. So we are going to stick with just trying to call the ball game here and, and talk about some of the positives that the Perry LeCompton football team can bring out in it. Uh, sweep to the right side for the Tigers. Uh, a little bit of room. Got a nice gain there on first down. Gain of about... Six to seven on that first down play. I saw ha Grant, Grant Rash out there. Ike Dwyer, perhaps? And Ike Dwyer was, was in on a tackle. Two guys. Second and three coming up for Atchison County. In play up the Ooh. middle, another nice tackle, but a uh, decent gain that time for the Tigers. That was number four. 22. Yeah, 22. Myers. Good enough for a Tiger first down. Quarterback again under center. Two backs in the backfield. Motion back. 
and a give to the left side Ooh. and nothing there. No. And somebody lost a helmet. Got a little frustration coming out there in the running back for the uh, Tigers. Nine thirty-two, clock running here in the third quarter. Second down and nine. And a give to the right side, a sweep to that far sideline. And maybe a gain of one. Looks like number two. On the carry? Drew yeah, Ledbetter Drew Ledbetter on the tackle. On the tackle. Ball taken up to the 36, third and eight coming up for Atchison County. Two receive receivers coming to the bottom of your screen. Two to the top, shotgun formation for Oswald. Going to look to throw, looking over the middle. And that ball batted away by number 16, in Ty Packard. Ty Packard. Who else is there in that coverage? 55? Yeah. Urban? Ty did a real, he timed it very well yeah. when it bat batted the ball away. Just jumped up like he was blocking a shot in basketball. Yeah, he did. Fourth down again coming up for the Tigers. Let's see, back deep for the cause, trying to get a number here. Looks like Dalton Kellum. Coach, can you see the far side there? Can't really tell. Uh, maybe Melanie. Number three, I think. Kellum fills it. No. And that, that taken way. down immediately. So uh, nice coverage there by the Tiger punt team. That was Quinlan on the far side. Yeah. Either way. First down. First and ten coming up for the call offense. Two receivers set. Packard in motion. Give is going to be to 32. Tyler Erickson rumbling up the field. Gain of about 15 to 16 on that first down play. First down quickly for the cause. First down play coming up again. Quinlan in motion right to left to give again up the middle straight ahead for Tyler Erickson. Pretty well played by the Tigers that time. Second and eight coming up. Kellum, a quick throw out to this side and bounces a little bit short. That pass intended for number 83, Landon Johnson. Third and eight now. So you're down in distance. Play coming in from the sideline. Calls all looking over. Three receivers to the right side. Dalton Kellum, your quarterback. Packard his left. Quinlan coming in motion. Kellum looking to throw. Looking over the middle. Now going to tuck it and try to get a few yards still on his feet. Breaks it to 30 and then taken down just inside of the 30-yard line down to the 25. Looks like number 21, Jaden Lee on the tackle. Nice tackle, but not in time. Down. 
Quinlan in motion left to right. A give to Quinlan trying to sweep and Quinlan on his feet. No one touches him as he steps into the end zone. So about a 25 yard touchdown yep. run for Quinlan. Puts another touchdown on the board. Toby Meyer on for the point after. And Coach, this is the first game that we've struggled with that point after kick. Yeah. Meyer down, kick is up, and again, no good. A lot of pressure that time. So that's going to bring your score to at 52. We've had two bad snaps tonight and two low kicks. But uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, those are, those are things that kind of happen when, like, like we talked about earlier, lopsided scores can be two-edged swords. It's kind of difficult to maintain your edge. Your, your yeah. you got to constantly challenge yourself to do the best you can. I'm sure they'll correct that. Again, a reminder of this uh, game, the second half, probably go pretty quick. The clock is continuing to run here, so even as we're setting up for the quick kickoff, it is 327 and running. Again, you expect Coach Paramore Get a lot of the young players in here in this second half. And, of course, he's already had the opportunity yeah. to put yeah. a number of yeah, younger guys in. You're right. We have, we've already seen Billy Welch at, at quarterback and and some of the younger faces on defense also. Rob set to kick off. And here's your kick, ball going down to around the 15 where it's going to be fielded. A little bit of room, taken down by number three. Number three, that would be um, Melanie. Yep. Jaden Lee on the return itself. Not a, not a bad field position for the Tigers. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Two yards in the backfield. You know, that's a little counter that mm -hmm. they were coming inside and had some success with early in the first half. Looks like the cause had enough of that. So second and 13 coming up. Oswald back to pass, throws it out. That ball tipped away by number 26. Is that Thad Metcalf? Thad Metcalf, freshman. Third and 13 coming. Let's see if that picked up. In the third quarter, Oswald looking to throw. Right side again, has some pressure. Ball floated up. Drew Ledbetter picks that one up down the far sideline. And Drew is going to return one for a touchdown here tonight. Got a flag on the play coming in. Personal foul against the cause. Yeah. That's the initial call. I, I don't know if that's after the touchdown or... 
They are conferencing out on the field, and that's just the end of the quarter, too. That brings it through. I think the conferencing is whether that occurred before the touchdown or not. I well there I mean there are rules specifically that can and I think that's what they're going to do. This this happened before the touchdown. They they'll call this touchdown back, I believe. Did it happen before the touchdown? Well, I I think that's what they'll they'll call because they set the, set the ball down on the 25. Now they'll probably bring it down to the 25 on the other half. I'm not sure. I'm just that's just yeah. my. Well, I think you might be right. I think that's what they're going to do. I was just. I thought if he was in, they would either they wouldn't mark it off an extra point, but on the kickoff perhaps. Well, you know, high school is a little different than both mm -hmm. college and pro. In college and pro, they don't, they wouldn't call that back, unless it occurred before. You know, if you have a hold before the, the touchdown, obviously that could could have helped. But here, we, I, we don't really know when it occurred. Flag was thrown pretty much simultaneously as he crossed the goal line. And if that's a 15 yard or 10 yard penalty then it would have it would have occurred on the 10 I right. there was nobody around them. but so the cause will have the ball first and 10 so Joel guess now in the backfield with Kellum Joel is a running back set up to Kellum's left side two receivers each side Oh, I'm sorry. Welch is, is that Welch? No. Who's 89? We got somebody different yet here. I, oh, Parker Stone. Yeah. Parker Stone in at quarterback for the cause. Parker played a little quarterback as a freshman or as a, an eighth grader last year. Very capable. Okay. So again, we're seeing some young, young faces rotated in here. 11 minutes again, running clock here in this fourth quarter. Cause up 52-0. And that quarter went back so so fast I didn't need, didn't update the uh, clock the scoreboard on the uh, cast give up the middle looks like trying to see who that is at that Metcalf little to no gain there Dawson Williams in motion. Dawson has the ball trying to get to the corner. A lot of defenders out there, and he's going to be thrown down for a two- to three-yard loss there on that third down play. Fourth and long coming up. I think that was Jaden Lee on that stop. I just can't quite see that number. It looks like 21. Williams again in motion. Give to Williams trying to get to the corner, trying to outrun. He's got the corner. Oh. And taken down from the back. Yeah. Down to the 20. So that will be a turnover on down. So without making that first down, now the Tigers will take over on offense. That was a real nice tackle by uh, number eight, Tucker Smith. Dawson had the corner, just couldn't make anything after he took cut it up. And Perry LeCompton has taken a timeout. Well, with that timeout, let's see if we can uh, hear a few words from our sponsors. Thinking about a new deck? McCray Lumber is your tech headquarters with the most advanced products in the industry. See a wide wow. variety of built examples that you can touch, stand on, and use to visualize your deck project. McCray is your local lumberyard. 
Our experienced and knowledgeable team will answer your questions and find solutions for all your building needs. From new construction to remodels, McRae has been Lawrence's answer for all things building related for over 70 years. Don't settle for the big box runaround. Get it right with McRae Lumber and Lawrence. AM Corporation has been providing quality construction services since the early 1950s, from small culvert replacement jobs to complex highway interchange projects. They have completed projects for cities, counties, and state agencies. Their experienced teams of project personnel and extensive construction equipment fleet are well positioned to handle grading projects of any size. The Ham Company has skilled rock excavation. And 929 left here in the fourth quarter. Again, Tigers taking over on downs. And the defense stepping up, throwing the Hatchison County ball carrier for about a five-yard loss there. That was Hayden Robb. That's a special kind of speed. You know, speed, I mean, just reading the play, his instincts yes. for football are outstanding. Yes, they are. And his ability to avoid the block, shed blockers and be where the ball is. He, as we said before, he's gonna be a fun one to watch the next four years here. Well, there's Thad Metcalf on this side as the linebacker. The option play to the right side, quick pitch, that ball on the ground. On the and it is recovered by the Tiger ball carrier, but um, does have a nice loss on the play, taking the ball down to about the eight yard line. So it's gonna be third and a really long ways. Very long. You know, I really liked what I saw. If you watched, if you watched that play develop, the, the blue shirts were doing their jobs. They're, everybody was covered. There was no way that anybody was going to get outside. Right. Exceptional. Two receivers split to the top of the screen, two to the bottom, more of a stack <coughs> formation here at the bottom. Shotgun formation for Oswald looking to throw, going to look to... His right, trying to go downfield. Dawson Williams picks that ball off. He's going to try to go for the return, see if he can go and do just what he did last week. And he's still on his feet, trying to get to the goal line, but not going to make it this week. But he does have a nice interception return down to the five-yard line. I think he'll take that. <laughs> I think Dawson's going to be pretty happy with that. So, call offense back on the field, 7:25. Clock running in the fourth quarter. First down and goal for the Cobs. Balls on the Ashton County six yard line. <coughs> Dawson in motion. Give up the middle. Trying to see. Was that 25 or 26? I couldn't Probably check. 26 be my Thad. Yep. Metcalf. Mm -hmm. It was. Metcalf, the ball carrier up the middle. Short gain on that. Again, going to bring up second and goal. <laughs> and again, Medcalf, the ball carrier. I don't believe he gained anything. Maybe lost one on that. That, that was play. simply a shirt tail tackle by number 22, Tristan Myers. He grabbed, he grabbed his shirt tail and held on. So third and goal, ball setting at the seven. <coughs> Two receivers to each side for this young call offense. Dawson Williams in motion. Going to give to Williams, trying to get his speed to get the corner, and there's nothing there this time. So this Atchison County defense stepping up against these young cause. Yeah. That ball is going to be taken back to about the 13 to 14 yard line. So loss on the play. Let's see what we have here. Have a timeout called. Stop the clock. 526 left. So let's see if we can get some more information in here.
First State Bank and Trust is an independent community bank serving the Perry community, Jefferson County, and Douglas County for many years. They have a long history of community service dating back to 1934. And that service continues today in seven locations throughout Northeast Kansas. Those locations are Perry, Lawrence, Tonganoxie, Baser, and Kansas City, Kansas. They offer a full array of financial products and services delivered by local banking professionals. Are you looking to purchase a new vehicle or better yet, to purchase a vehicle for your student? Let First State Bank and Trust help make this process an easy one. They offer same-day approvals, new low rates, and the convenience of having payments charged directly from your checking account. Be sure to stop by the Perry Branch at 402 Plaza Drive in Perry, Kansas, or give them a call at 785-597-5151. In fourth and goal coming up here. And let's see what uh, Coach Paramore draws up. A little quarterback draw right up the middle. Got a lot of room. Nice play call. Oh. And that was number 89. Parker Stone. Parker Stone. Yeah. In for his first varsity touchdown. Yeah. Doesn't seem to matter really who is in there. Cause have had good success running mm -hmm. the football. So right now before the attempt on the point after, score setting at 58 for the cause. Mason Robb in to kick this one. Straight ahead, kick goes up, and it's good. So Mason Robb tacks on the point after here. Taking it up to 59 to 0, 513 remaining. Let's shorten your home improvement wish list. Screen porch, deck, front door, windows, finished basement, room addition. Turning your current home into your dream home or building it from the ground up, start something great at McCray Lumber. From drafting to delivery, we can even recommend the right guys for the job. Ask about our expert drafting service and anything else the McCray crew can help with. We're just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street. McCray Lumber, the building supplier that supplies more than building materials. We deliver dreams done right. Well, at least on this sideline, Coach Landis, it seems to be a few happy fans in the seat. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're going to win and win big, it's nice to do it when you got a big crowd there and everybody can enjoy it. And yeah. Everybody gets to see their kid play because everybody for the cause probably has just about got into that ball game. I think you're right there. It looks like everybody's seen the, the green grass on the playing field tonight. Mason Robb again. Kicking off. Nice kick. Ball on the ground right around the 25, but picked up and well covered <laughs> by the cause. 58 in on that. Looks like, is that 26 or 25? Oh, I think it's 25. Is that 25? I believe it is. Riley Beasler. Mr. Yeah, it is. Riley Beasler in on that. Another good looking athlete. Tigers probably got to figure they're just coming out of the woodwork, these good athletes. <laughs> like a swarm of bees just coming after you, huh? Yeah, there's. <laughs> and tight formation here again. For the Tigers, a little reverse to the inside. This time the running back has some room, and it looks like he fooled that young caught defense. Oh. But what? Dawson Williams Man, showing what a, some speed. What a nice tackle by Dawson Williams. I will tell you, there's no quitting that young man. No, he not. wasn't going to let this kid get away from him. You got to love the wheels on that kid. Well, you know, I like the fact he made the play as soon as he could, yeah. not, not chasing him down the field <coughs> and then a j dive. First and 10, ball setting on 35, another running play this time, trying to sweep to the right and has some room. This time the Tigers are going to get on the board here with that running play. So... 
No shutout tonight. Tigers score with two minutes left and again running clock. So this might be the end of the game here. Well, got a stoppage. So that makes your score 59 to 6. And we'll see what happens with the extra point. Tigers going for two. And Oswald under center. Two back from the backfield. Straight ahead. And two-point conversion is good. So 155 left in the game. 59 to 8 is now the score. Let's get that updated. Okay, we are back, one minute and counting, coming close to the end of this game. Onside kick? Yeah. You think? Well, you know, if you're out there trying to score and you want to get an opportunity, there it is. Onside kick, and he got it. Oh, and they got it. Tigers got it back. They will call a timeout now. So timeout called with 28 seconds left in the game. You got the wind behind your back. You got 28 seconds and there's nothing to lose. Let her fly. Yeah. More than likely if the cause had gotten that ball, there'd be one snap and they'd take a knee. On a knee, yep. Looking ahead, Coach, I think uh, next week we'll be on the road going to Troy. Again, Troy, Trojans, the defending 2A state champions. And they gave the cause all they wanted last year and more right here on this field. It was a great game, though. Yeah, it great was. Great game to watch. Cause had a tough schedule last year. They played some very good <laughs> football teams as they moved through the season. Well, as we get out of here, we'll try to see if uh, – Pat Winchester next door, see if he has any score updates for us. <laughs> and pass attempted over the middle, pass complete. And the Tiger gonna break free. They're gonna get on the board again here before the end of this game. 15 Tuck seconds and counting, that should be it. Tucker Smith with that touchdown. Yeah, they could call another timeout, but they would still only have a few seconds left. Yeah. I don't believe they're even going to get this extra point attempt in. No. They may be allowed that. I think when you score, except in overtime, I, th I think you go ahead and go for the point if you want to go for it. A score from the Nemaha Central Holton game. No, that's the game. Well, unless it's called time out. Central 30, Holton 11. Yeah. See what else we can find here for you. Again, we are looking at scores in Kansas, trying to find a few big seven scores if we can find them. But I think that's about all we're going to find right now. So, again, thank you very much for watching tonight. Um, again, it was the uh, wrapping up here. Cause moved to 3-0 and on the season, 3-0 and in the Big 7, so setting good there. Uh, we have, again, we have not heard scores yet.
from the Jeff West game, or we have not heard scores from the Sabetha, which is the Sabetha game. So as soon as we get something on that, we try to pass along, but I, I don't think we are. Again, our game moved along pretty quickly here tonight yes, it did. in the second half. Especially for a homecoming game. So from Perry LeCompton High School on homecoming night for cameraman Easton Elliott and right next to me, Coach Armin Landis, and our technical producer, Will Gantz. Thank you very much again for listening in. Hope you have a wonderful night, and we'll see you again next week, 7 o'clock from Troy, Kansas.